Welcome to the Will Caminata podcast. I'm your host and guide, Will Caminata. This is a conversation episode where I bring a special guest to share with us their spiritual awakening journey and their expertise so that we can all be inspired, educated, and feel connected as one. Hello, beautiful soul. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm grateful and honored that you chose to listen to the Will Caminata podcast. And today I had a wonderful conversation with Shanila, who is a fourth generation sound healer, breathwork coach, women's researcher, national speaker, and host of a top six podcast, The Playground. She is the founder of Always Play Studios and the Integrative Healing Academy, which trains sound healers and breathwork facilitators and The Playground, which mentors aspiring healers in health and wellness. Shanila is full of knowledge and wisdom, so I'm sure you will have many insights during this episode. We mostly talked about her work mentoring new coaches and healers, what sparkled in her the desire to guide this new generation of healers, the most common fears and struggles for the new soul-driven entrepreneurs, her play method, the different healer archetypes she works with, and she even gave us a few practical first steps for anyone wanting to own their gifts and start making an impact in the world. I hope you enjoy the show, and if you do, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment or review, and share this episode with your friends. Enjoy it. Hi, Shanila. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's always nice to see your bright, smiling face. Uh, Likewise. So Shanila and I met back, I think it was 2018, when we were both living in LA. And I attended one of your sound baths. And then we became friends. And um, last year, you came to my Instacast. So it was kind of like the beginning of this podcast. I was just like... Um, practicing my podcasting skills. Um, yes. So it was really awesome to connect with you then. And we talked about your spiritual awakening and your sound healing and the breath work now that, you know, more like of your journey. So um, I recommend for anyone listening, if you want to, to listen to that, it's archived, it's saved on my IGTV. So if you're interested in learning more about Shandila's spiritual awakening, and her work with sound healing and breath work you can check that out and today we're going to focus more on the work that Shanila has been doing with new healers and coaches as a mentor so my first question is what um, sparkled in you this desire or maybe calling to start working with new healers and coaches and start guiding them and mentoring them I love that question. And that that's so interesting, because, you know, back in the day before I was even in the healing space, before I was doing breath work or sound healing or any kind of coaching or mentorship, uh, back in the day, I used to be a women's researcher. And back then, I used to look at what keeps girls interested in math and sciences and study with different universities. We would travel to different schools around the country, studying women's experiences in society, perfectionism, grid, implicit biases, and all those things. And now that I look back on this journey that I'm on right now, supporting people in their healing journey, it's not anything different than I what I have been doing for the last 20 years, I guess, you know, it just looked a little bit different. And, you know, my my mission to have mentorship programs and my mission to have supportive systems for healers is because it's something that I wish I had a couple of years ago. I wish there was somebody who was talking about the woo and somebody who was talking about the mysticism, somebody who was science minded, somebody who practical stuff, the applied and also talked about it in a way that it was um, understandable and relatable. Right. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times when we are brand new to healing, it feels like a really lonesome journey. It feels like 
Who do I talk about all these weird things that I'm experiencing, this awakening that I'm experiencing, these emotions that I'm processing for the first time? I want to have a group of people to talk about it. And one thing that I was missing when I was first in my entrepreneurship journey is that I was completely, completely alone. I didn't have a group of friends who were, you know, also sound healers. I didn't have a group of friends that were also breathwork facilitators, right? And, you know, me, me and Will, we met, we met through events and that's how, you know, community started to grow we started to have connection within the community and understand then like yeah there's other healers and there's other people who are doing this kind of work there's other mystics there's other you know guides and coaches and blah 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 but that comes with time what yeah. I, what i wish i had in the beginning very beginning is a supportive group of other new healers who are just working through the fears of even calling themselves healers you know mm -hmm. that's something i dealt with i didn't i didn't want to be called a healer I I was like, I want to be called an alchemist. I was like sound alchemist or facilitator or guide or practitioner. You know, I really had a hard time utilizing the word healer. So part of that journey is being in your own self-healing journey and being in a place where you're supported by other community members who are also going through the same questioning. They're like, am I a healer? Am I qualified to say I'm a healer? I'm only this age, can I be a healer? Or I don't have this experience and can I be a healer? I haven't experienced X, Y, and Z thing. Can I be a healer? You're constantly questioning yourself. And what I wish I knew back then is that we're all on our own unique journey and a supportive community that helps you see that and holds you in that space is exactly what I aim to ho hold for healers and people who are on their healing journey in everything that I put together. I love that. And I think I've, I've heard you say something along the lines of the, the person you're serving today is yourself two years ago. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, part of what I do is help healers start up their intuitive businesses. And, you know, there, there is a, there is a mindset of starting business where you think that you need to know the one, two, three strategies of how to do everything. You think like this is the way to success. If you do step one, two and three and and here's the blueprint here and here's that you're going to be successful. But that's a very masculine and patriarchal way for intuitive people to do business. Mm -hmm. So the next portion of that is being in an intuitive business model, which is all about aligning with your specific skill sets, your energy centers, and also understanding what your specific archetype is. And so what I say to people, My next right, <laughs> you're right, right. So what I say to people is that when we're following very patriarchal business models we're always told down to like niche down niche down niche down everybody's like niche 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 who do you serve who do you serve who do you serve and i think that question is a lot less complicated than we make it and, and the way that we uncomplicate it is just really ask ourselves who were we why do we why do we do the thing that we do? Why am I a healer? Who is the people that I'm trying to hold space for? And the truth of the matter is, uh, the shortcut version of all of this is that we hold space for who we were two years ago or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So when you look back into even the, even the work that I'm doing right now, supporting people, supporting healers to start up their intuitive businesses, I literally just told you I have this program because I, you know, I have programs because I wish somebody had this exact space for me two years ago. It would have helped me not have a lot of headaches, not have a lot of pain, not have a lot of confusion, not have a lot of insecurities, not have a lot of mistakes, wasting time and money and energy because there was a supportive container for that. And so when I look at myself two years ago or five years ago, actually, if I look at myself five years ago, where was I? What did I want to know? Who was, who was I then that needed, what, what did I need? Questions? Yeah. What was I questioning? What, you know, and it seems so simple when you're five years later, you're like, duh, this is so obvious because now you've lived and you've learned and you have more experiences. And of course, who you serve changes over time. So the niche thing doesn't always work because we're adaptable and malleable and multidimensional people. And so five years from now, I might not be working with who I was 10 years ago. I might be working with who I am right now, this current version, right? And so what I love to do is 
leave myself breadcrumbs. I leave myself breadcrumbs by um, journaling. I like to write down like exactly what I'm feeling, exactly what I'm thinking, exactly what my fears are, what I'm working through and how I actually work through those fears. That's the important part because I'm literally leaving myself the blueprint to give to somebody five years from now. So when somebody who's in my position, who's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with co- being called a healer. I've put my services out into the world. I'm making, you know, sustainable income in my business. I have clients, I've got my pro- programs together, but now I want to go to the next level. Me five years or not, five years or not will be at that next level. And then I can advise myself five years back. I love that. And it's so, it's so simple, but it's a great North for everyone. Yeah. Again, not even just like healers, like everyone. Like if you if you think about it, like who was I five years ago, two years ago? What were my questions? You know, what was I going through? Um, and then you can start from from there and develop from there. And um, I want to pick on what you you say about alignment because you you always mention about being aligned with who you are. And as a healer, you talk about the different types of archetypes and being aligned with that. Can you expand a little bit more about that on that? Yes. I mean, alignment is something that changes as we change with life. So something that we may be aligned to at one point that was just like, this is it. This is my purest alignment can change over time because we experience life and we go through heartache and pain and transition. There's so many different things that happen that changes who we are. Mm -hmm. And so our alignment actually changes with the seasons of our life. And something that I work with is called the healer archetypes, something that I literally downloaded through my body one day. And basically there's four different healer archetypes and each of these healer archetypes look a little bit differently in the terms of what skills they have, what personalities they have, what part of their bodies they work from, what energy centers are the most strong in. And so each of these healer archetypes actually show up a little bit differently in the world. And mm-hmm. we kind of, even before knowing any of the healer archetypes, you if you think about anybody who's in the health and healing space, you see that certain types of people are attracted to certain modalities. Yeah. You'll see like these kinds of people are attracted to sound healing and these kinds of people are attracted to acupuncture and these kinds of people are massage therapists. And you can't really put your finger on it, but they're actually very specific archetypal uh, elements that are going on when you look at these these groups of people. And so there is something called the alchemist archetype. And the alchemist archetype are the people who are really, really, really interested in both the science and the woo of their practices. So these are people who probably have a lot of education in what they want to do. They study, they're all about books, they love the linear, logical, system ways of thinking. They want to know the science. They want to know the case studies. They want to know the evidence. And they're also curious about all the mysticism. They're like, there. I know that there is a world out here that is unexplainable, that science hasn't caught up to explaining. So the archetype of the alchemist is about blending the science and the woo worlds. These are the people who are really amazing at bringing the two worlds together. So they're not heavily only on the science or heavily all the way out there in the woo. They're the one who is bringing the two worlds together. So these are the people who are the the sound healers. You know, they're using the science of sound, all the binaural beats, the brain wave. They're learning about entrainment and frequencies and all this advanced scientific stuff. But there's also like the experiential portion of attending a sound bath or being a sound healer, which is about energy work. And how do you explain that? How do you explain healing through emotions? How do you explain that you astral travel and, you know, got to a different level of consciousness and healed through this different thing with your family and you forgave, you know, your parents? Like, how do you explain that? So there's both. There's the science and there's the woo part of that. So you have the alchemists that are like sound healers. They're also the acupuncturists. You know, acupuncture uses a lot of uh, a, a lot of um, science-based elements, anatomy, meridians, energy flow, uh, chemical release, right? The chakra system. And there's also all the woo of, of 
experiencing acupuncture. It's like, okay, well, why did you heal through all this stuff? Why did you start crying? Why did you uh, have visualizations or hallucinations or how did that heal? So there, there's both these elements of that. Um, we also have ac uh, alchemists who are um, really good at chakra balancing. They're good at the guided meditations. They're kind of the, they're the people who embrace duality. They're the people who understand that the world exists in all spectrum, that if we're too heavy on the woo, you're missing the point and if you're too heavy on the science you're missing the point both of these things work together i can and tell so you are an alchemist i am heavily in an alchemist yeah my background is in science research and now i play crystal balls and so it requires me to have a lot of information that helped me kind of connect the dots i can't only just have the science and i can't only just be in the woo i need both of them to dance together so you also can think about chefs as alchemists, right? The chefs are the ones who are cooking up there. There's science behind cooking, but then there's also love behind it. There's like creativity behind it. There's art yeah. behind it, right? And people who work with flowers and herbs, uh, essential oils um, tend to be on the alchemist side sides as well. So there's another, um, there's another archetype. It's called the nurturer. And nurturers are people who work from the heart. Their heart energy center is really, really open. These are the people who you, who you typically hear they, themselves call that they're empath, right? These are the people who are heavily in the heart. They're not into working with like big groups of people. They don't want to be on stage going and speaking and talking and all of that. They're the love intimate spaces they're the reiki masters who are holding one-on-one -on -one space they're the massage therapists they're the people who are working with their hands they love the touch they love the uh, the privacy of holding an intimate space so the nurture archetype are your nurses a lot of nurses a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one therapists cognitive therapists are nurturers of course massage reiki these are your nurturers right anybody who loves that safe intimate space and then we have the transformer archetype the transformer these are all your coaches these are the people who are really good at seeing the big picture and they're like okay i know how to get you from point a from where you are all the way to point b for where you want to go so this is about getting someone from where they where they are to all the way where they want to go and the coaches are the health coaches the life coaches the transformational coaches and so your modality is somebody who's a uh, transformer they're really into practicing breath work they really know that breath work gets you from here to here to work through subconscious blocks to work through somatic blocks through uh, through somebody's body and transformers are um go good at both one-on-one -on -one, they're also good at groups so it just depends on the personality they're sometimes really good at they're really interested in doing one-on-one -on -one sessions but they more so enjoy being in a small medium-sized group or a really big group and so transformer energies are people who are incredibly confident. They just know that they can get this transformation for this person. And here's the step one, two, three, four, uh, for you to do that. And we're going to work to work to get that done. And then the last archetype we have is the visionary archetype and the visionary archetypes are kind of lone wolves. These are people who are a little bit ahead of their time. So uh, a lot of the things that they're talking about, people don't really get it. So they have to pave the their own path. <laughs> Pardon? The Aquarians. The Aquarians. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, what are you talking about? And then like 50 years later, we're like, oh, you had something, you had something to say that made sense. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so you'll see, you'll see a lot of visionaries who have podcasts. They're the thought leaders. They have a lot of group, um, group programs that haven't been created before. They're the ones who are creating like membership communities that are novel or new and it, and, and they have to be really, really super aligned in their crown chakra and also in their, uh, in their confidence center because they're they have to utilize pretty much every single energy center in their body in order to um, do the thing that they want to do especially knowing that there aren't a lot of people around them that get it you know there's not a lot of people around them that get it not because you're wrong you're getting downloads that give you permission to show up into the world in the way that you want to show up, but you have to be in your own power and your own embodiment to do that. And the thing is, we actually embody all four archetypes. We are all four archetypes. That's what I was, but, I was thinking, because as you were describing the archetypes, I think everybody, list, anybody listening can identify like, oh yes, I'm an alchemist, or yes, I'm a visionary, but 
I think there is one that's more predominant. Is that correct? Yeah. But we, we all embody the four of them. We all have like, qualities, right? Absolutely. And the cool thing is that you you have all four archetypes working for you. But depending on the season of what you're working with, your archetype is going to be louder in one way. So you might be in your visionary season, you know, in, in this energy where you're like, I don't want to hold group programs. I don't want to do one on one clients. That seems like completely not my jam. But you might come into a different season of your life or in a different season in your energy where you're like, it feels really right for me to hold this one on one space again. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing is that when you check in with what archetype you are embodying at this moment and archetypes can last for a few months to a year, you know, it, it, it doesn't have like, OK, every three months you're like switching or for to the rest archetype. of your life. You're the for your yeah, you're for the rest of your life. You know, it doesn't mean that just because you're this like big transformer and you love to do like big coaching and um, big groups and everything that you can't hold one on one space. It yeah. just might be less in your alignment at this time to do that. And so understanding that, especially in intuitive business, it's really important because sometimes we think like, oh, my gosh, like I really have my mind set on launching X, Y and Z or I want to put this out into the world. You're but not in, you're, you're being more of a visionary at that exactly exactly and so it might not be the season for you to um hold space for other people it's a season for you to hold space and just download those ideas and put those out into the world you know and i'll i'll use a personal example like last year i felt really in my uh, i really felt in my visionary archetype i was just like creating 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 i was not tired i was not like burnt out it was just like download 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 and i was like making it making it, making it it, right including you know starting a podcast including like having group programs including um launching uh, virtual facilitator programs all of these things were in my visionary archetype it was in a very doing archetype and then i know personally for my energy during the end of the year especially during november december january i experienced seasonal depression i don't have chemicals in my body right i don't have the uh i have to take care of myself a little bit differently than i do at a different different time of the year when like the chemicals are good. I'm feeling energized. And so during that time, I shut down pretty much everything I do. I don't have breathwork classes on Sundays anymore. I don't have any mentorship programs going on. I don't have this. This I did nothing. Ja uh, October, November, December and January, I'm picking back up because like there's more sunlight. I have more energy for that. Yeah. And so that's just to say that when you understand what your energy flow is, you can actually really work with your archetype to get a lot more done in your life rather than fighting against things that are not in alignment with you. Yeah, I love that because we tend to forget that we we are human beings who work through cycles and seasons, right? Yeah. That that yeah. there is a reason why there is winter and summer and spring, right? And we we yeah. think we have to be that one thing all the time, the go, go, go. Right. And I love that. So, you know, being aware of the, the seasons and the cycles and being aware of the archetype and putting them together, I think you're working for you, right? You're working in favor of, of your gifts. Exactly. And I think we get confused when we see, um, you know, especially social media and everywhere that you see other people embodying their specific archetype. And then you have this urge to also do it the way that they're doing it. Right. And it, that's the trap. That is the trap when you think you're supposed to do something the same way somebody else is doing it because it's working for them. So you might have the exact archetype and that might work out for you. But, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's just not true. You have a very specific skill set. You have very unique life experiences, unique gifts, unique way that your energy talks to you. And now it's about understanding that and actually embodying it, feeling that energy into your body so that you understand that there are strategies and methods of being, um, you know, out there in the world, sharing your gifts, having an intuitive business that work for other people, but it's not necessarily your format. So if it feels like it's hard to show up in the way somebody else is showing up, it's literally your intuition telling you that it's out of your alignment. I love that. And I know that uh, on your website, you have this test, right? For people to find out 
was their yes. predominant archetype, right? So if anybody yes. listening, if they want to check what archetype they are, they can check your website. I'll put the link in, in the show's notes. Yeah. And I also recommend taking it a few times throughout the year so you can check in like what what am I embodying right now because it's so cool you'll see yourself changing up your answers there's a lot of questions around your energy centers like which part of your body are you trusting right now mm -hmm. uh, you'll see it it's on alwaysplay.org forward slash healer archetype and so when you go on there you'll see it asks you about which part of your energy centers you're most strongest from and that's how we that, that this is how we know that we're actually fluctuating and changing throughout the year because right now you might be really in a heart space you're just like i'm like creating out of love i'm feeling this and another time of the year you might be like really in your crown chakra you might be just like in your download or you might be in your roots you're just feeling like really grounded so depending on where your energy center is supporting you where that power source is flo floating and uh working with you it's nice to kind of check in with yourself couple of times in the year, just so you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I, 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 I'm actually in my alchemist archetype right now, which is about me connecting the dots and not so much about like holding uh, groups and facilitating like that. It's really for me to share information. It's really for me to do, um, do teaching and not necessarily uh, have group coaching where I'm, uh, where I'm trying to do a transformer archetype. So when you understand where that is falling in that season, your, the projects that you take on and the way that you approach those projects also change. Yeah. Yeah. I think energy awareness is the key, right? Like yeah. you, know, you were talking about the chakras and I think that's something I talk about too. Like when you're aware of that, it's not like set in stone. It's always changing because we're always changing and you learn to be in tune, be in touch with your energy field and work with it. Right. And also um, I think, it gives you that um, that direction to on where you have to maybe focus and put a little bit more effort to because I know for myself, for example, I am I love staying in the in the downloading phase and creating and having ideas. So that's very easy for me. So I know that I need to put a little bit more effort in actually trying to figure out how to manifest those ideas. So. My point is this, that energy awareness is really key because then you know what your strengths are, what you need to focus on. And also, you know, like the cycles and the seasons, you, you're aware in your body, right? And you talk also a lot about the, the phases of the moon. And so I guess it's like a combination of things, but it doesn't have to be complicated. I guess once you become in touch with your energy awareness, it gives you all the the, the tools and, and signs, right? And guidance. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you say it like that, because it's like we have all these external markers, like the moon, you can channel you can check in with your energy with the moon phases. You can check in with your energy with a healer archetype quiz. You can check in with your energy with another, you know, uh, with your, what's your human design and what's your personality type. You can do all of these things, but at the core of it is just self-awareness. You know, mm -hmm. those, those are just external tools that help you guide you into that awareness, but it isn't your only awareness of that because you low key already understand that intuitively, like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling really activated and I'm just like downloading all these ideas. And so you might start to bully yourself by like, I'm not doing enough to put it out into the world. But it's like, if you just chill out and just understand that there has also been times in your life where you were doing a lot, but you weren't getting any ideas, you mm -hmm. know, because those two things don't always happen at the same time. These, these, these things happen in seasons. So when you're just like noticing the natural patterns of your body, and like I mentioned, my, my thing about uh, the end of the year where there's not a lot of sunlight, I do experience low chemicals. So I know that my body is going to be producing less ideas and less energy and less OPD motivation during that time. So instead of bullying myself during that time, I can give myself a different project that feels still like I'm in momentum, like I'm not just like completely hibernating in a way that feels, you know, like uh, completely out of alignment with me, but taking on slower projects. So maybe 
maybe this is not the download season, but maybe it is like a creative season where you're just doing something because it feels fun. And yeah. for me, it was like I downloaded some um, sketching programs on my iPad. And so I've been like sketching and drawing and like I have my friends send me pictures of them and then I send them back like illustrations and stuff like that. And that's just like for a fun thing. And that yeah. is part of your flow and that is part of your alignment. It, that is, you know, and um, because, you know, you do so much art and you do poetry and singing and songwriting. And you also know that like you can't always be in that energy because there is like a creative burnout in that, too. Like there there's a uh, there's the writer's blocks that come through. There's the creative blocks that comes through. There's the energetic blocks that come through and things that we're creating start to become less fun because we're forcing our energy into um having to produce something yeah. or i guess the block that you mentioned it comes from the resistance right yeah like you don't eat there is a flow that you're resisting and then that that block happens because you're going against what your natural flow wants to go exactly to and also understanding the difference between when you do feel these blocks, like when we feel any kind of resistance, sometimes it's the resistance because we're about to like completely expand in our vibration. We're about to like go to the next level. We're about to like break through something and it's the growing pain. So that resistance can't be that, but it can also be a resistance where it's like, we're doing something out of our alignment. Mm -hmm. And I speak a lot about, you know, knowing the difference between when something is new to you versus when something is no to you, because the way that fear and excitement process in our body is very similar. They have the same chemicals. They feel uh, very similar. Like anytime you're about to do something new and, and you were, you know, that you were excited about, like you were about to go on a date or you had a, a performance that you were excited about, you felt scared, right? There was like that energy of like nervousness, but it was like a good kind of nervousness because you were excited to do that. And that energy kind of feels very similar when you're about to do something that is completely out of alignment with you. Like when you knew it in your gut that you shouldn't do something, but you didn't really know how to verbalize it or you didn't know how to talk about it that energy feels exact same so i always recommend that when we are feeling any kind of resistance that we look within ourselves and we ask ourselves this like if i'm about to do this thing is this going to feel liberating or not is this going to liberate me or is this going to trap me is this a further trap mm -hmm. and one way to look is noticing if you're just doing a little bit of simple stopping and breathing situation if you just stop and breathe you just notice and you meditate on the situation or this action that you're about to do what does it feel like in your body does it feel like it's constricting you like it's making you feel smaller and gross and you're like oh you know like and you're already thinking all of all the ways that the next couple of things that you're going to have to do after this is going to suck, right? If you feel like it's going to constrict you, that's not expansion. That's not growing pain. That's not just like, you know, the fear of doing something new, which expands you, that elevates you, that shows you like a whole different way to do and be and to vibrate. And you know that like, as soon as you, you know, go and do that thing, how amazing you feel. You were glad you went and did that performance, even though it was scary and you, you were so nervous and you're just like, I can't wait to do it again. You don't even remember feeling that fear. That fear just processes through because now you're at the next level. And this is kind of just like building our muscle of working through fear. Anytime we're feeling resistance, it is actually just asking us to say, is this just an, is this new to me? And this is going to grow me. This is going to expand me. This is going to make me better. This is going to align me with everything that I want to create in my life. Is this just new? And that's why I'm like, you know, being kind of shy about it. Or is this a complete no, like my energy, my highest self, my intuition, my gut, my heart, my mind is telling me like, this is, this is a no. No. And low key, we we don't need any books to tell us that all yeah. the information exists in our body. Yeah. Just noticing how the breath is going, how the heartache heartbeat is going, Thank what you. kind of yeah your shoulder the tension the heat energy you feel like are you getting hot when you're thinking about this and, and not out of excitement so this is kind of the emotional regulation that a lot of us aren't taught and so when we're talking about you know embodying your archetype it's like you low-key know what kind of archetype you are this season and part of your mind your thinking mind is telling you 
no, 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 no. We have to stick to this because we know this, or we have to stick to that because we see somebody else doing it, or we stick to because this. That because was your, that was our plan in the beginning, right? That was the plan, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> f the plan, right? <laughs> and the and the and, and and the plan is to be adaptable because we're multi-dimensional people. We're always changing. Things are always going to happen in society. Things are always happening, and this reflects onto how we create our businesses too. Because you can't be so stuck in one model of doing something and one model of being and one model of the energetics behind your business. It has to reflect a pure embodiment of who you actually are. Yeah. And the inner work that you do to align with that is going to allow your business to shift with you as you shift too. Mm -hmm. So as you expand in as yourself as a person, your business has room and permission to also shift. So you're not like having to tell people why you changed your business or having to tell people why you don't offer or why you do offer this thing anymore. It's like, I don't resonate with that, you yeah. know? And people like, expand with you. That's the beauty people that. expand with you. And I, I don't know about you, but you know, I love to expand with people who are continuously expanding themselves. Oh, yeah. That's inspiring. That is so inspiring. It's like you are not stuck in your way and you're not on a pedestal telling me this is the way things are and this is the way that things will always be. We're all in progress and, uh, you know, we, we get to show up as we are and who we are right now. We get to we get to be seen as who we are. If we improve in the next couple of years, let's improve. And if we know something different, we'll know something different. But that's fine. It just means that you're a human being, and is that so wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does take a little bit, a little bit, or a lot of willingness to expand and to grow and to heal too. So, I guess anyone working in this field of healing, um, it's only natural that as they expand, as you said, the business expands too, and it's important to respect that and expand alongside, allow the business to expand alongside you. Love it. 100%. There's one thing that I also love that you always talk about, which is this message of just playing more. Just is a very light message. You know, your your companies always play. Your podcast is a playground, um, and even like in in social media, you create those really funny reels <laughs> and 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 posts that brings a sense of lightness and fun and um humor to spirituality which i think it's great and i think it's so necessary you know like life doesn't have to be so serious life doesn't have to be so heavy doesn't the journey doesn't have to be so difficult so i think that's a beautiful and much needed message so can you tell us about your play method that you came yeah. up with absolutely you know you hit the nail right on the head things just don't have to be so serious you know, we, we are always in this, like, we're always in this mentality that we have to have something figured out. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. <laughs> you know, it, it's just not true. And the more, the more that you look into it, the more that Whoever you... Whoever says that they have everything figured out, just be wary. It's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust them, you know? I don't trust them either. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so refreshing to see, you know, people like you, Will, and, and, and folks that are in, in the modern, like, healing space who are showing up with a lighter message that is not based in perfectionism. You know, we complain about perfectionism all the time, and then we contribute to it by having, like, perfect things, perfect you know, socials, perfect websites, perfect, perfect, perfect business. When it's like, it's okay that we take some chances. We play a little bit. We don't actually know what sticks and what it doesn't. And we're just in the self-discovery phase. We're just discovering ourselves. We're rediscovering ourselves and relearning. So one thing that I like to use is I call it the play method, you know, play P L A Y and P L A Y stand for different things. So P is basically your passion and your purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and in especially in intuitive business, um, I like to come back to this one concept of the Ikigai. And it's this Japanese concept where you're basically asking what is your what is your gift? What is the thing that somebody will pay you for? What is the thing that you're naturally good at? 
What are the things that the world needs? And in the center of that, of all those things is your ikigai. That's your passion and your purpose. And low key, we feel like we have to somehow discover our purpose somewhere. We're like walking around the street and turn over a rock and there's our purpose. And somebody's going to like tell it to us in a conference or something. We're already in our purpose. It's yeah. about amplifying that voice. So sometimes we are doing too many things that are only paying us or doing things that the world on, doing too many things that the world needs and that's not paying us or we're only doing something over here or only doing something here the center part the things that the world needs the things that your unique gifts are and the things that the world will pay you for is your ikigai this is the space where you can really tap into your unique gifts so the play purpose the p is aligning with that per passion and that purpose, you know, not getting confused that you somehow don't have a purpose, that you don't have a passion or do you don't have something, you know, it's because we have been taught that we have to niche down, we have to narrow down, we have to only be good at one thing. We get a little deterred from where that purpose is. We can just get deterred from it. You know, we're, we might be acting, we might be in a job that's not in, in our purpose. We might be in a relationship. We might be participating in things and you know we're so what okay just come back let's come back to that purpose the l p l l is all about letting go of the limiting beliefs that keep you from not being in your purpose you know we feel like somebody's gonna say some stuff you know somebody's gonna bully me or my friends are gonna leave me or my parents are gonna think this or da 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 da, da, da. there's so many limiting beliefs especially when you're in intuitive business there's a belief that there's the broke healer paradigm like if you're a healer for some reason you can't charge money or you can't have um success out of uh, being, being participating in an energy exchange that gives you money in return for your services and your gifts. You have limiting beliefs around that. So you show up in a scarcity mindset, you show up without really embracing and embodying your, uh, your abundance. You don't attract based on the manifestations that you are able to bring in. You manifest things that you, uh, are, are not wanting to bring into your life because the vibrational energy that you're sending out are based on those limiting thoughts, the subconscious beliefs that we have. So it's about acknowledging like, wait a second, why can't I show up into the world in the way that I want to show up? What are my fears around it? And what's the worst that's going to happen? And part of, you know, what I mentioned around, you know, creating mentorship for healers is because a lot of us live in that, that energy. We live in like, I'm going to lose all my friends. I'm not going to know what to do. I'm not going to, I'm going to, but a part of us has to break up with that old version of us in order to be with this new version of us that is abundant, that is attracting, that is magnified, that is amplified, and that actually embodies the things that you want to put out into the world, the energy that you actually want to show up into the spaces in. And then the A is aligning with your archetype and understanding what actions are meant for you and what actions aren't meant for you. Mm -hmm. So don't be so concerned about who is doing something else and where somebody else is doing what are what is on somebody else's paper. Keep your eyes on your own lane. Align with your archetype for that season and align with the actions that are aligned with that archetype. So this means that if you're somebody who's growing that intuitive business and you see somebody who's like constantly on social media and they're like doing this, 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 and then Loki makes you feel bad because that's not your archetype. Stop yeah. feeling bad about it and embrace your archetype because you have a gift that they're not really in tune to. And this isn't because some way is better or worse is that some ways are more visible than the other. There are people who are doing really amazing work very quietly. They're not out here showing you what they're working on and what they're doing. Their archetype is about different types of spaces. So when you align with that archetype and you understand that it's okay, that there's less eyes on your work, there's less eyes in the way that you're creating right now, things are going to explode for you because you're not fighting against something that's unnatural for you, fighting against something that doesn't work for you to show up. And then the why, P-L-A-Y, why, why is because it all comes back to you. Like, why do you do the things you do? Come back to your purpose. Like, why, why are you putting out things into the world that make no sense? What kind of energy are you putting out? Why are you putting out perfectionism? Why are you putting out things that don't heal the collective? What, yeah. Why are you putting out For some things time, that like, are... Why are you even on social media if you don't like them, if you don't want to be there? Right. Yeah. It's, and your relationship. Society says so that you have to do this. 
Exactly. And, and investigating your relationship with yourself too. And at the end of the day, we need people to come up and show up as themselves. No more masks and facades and pretending and putting on a show for anybody. You are, you in your fullest embodiments is the greatest gift that we can give ourselves. The greatest gift we can give to the collective is not trying to fake who we are, trying not to pretend like we're all, you know, healed and gurus mm -hmm. and standing on a pedestal. We showed up, we show up into the world with all the ways that we're amazing and all the ways that we have flaws, that we're still learning and that we're imperfect and that we don't have it all figured out. Yeah. And I think that's when people really connect with you. You know, when you show up authentically and you say, this is me, this is what I've, this is my life, this, these are my experiences. Um, that's when people really connect with you and they really start following you and want to work with you because you're not trying to be someone that's perfect. Nobody wants to work with a perfect person because no. <laughs> there isn't such thing, right? Yeah. There isn't such thing as a 100% healed person. That's another thing too, you know? So we're, you know, a healer that claims that I, I don't trust them either. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust them. I want to work with them. someone that's real, you know, that's having this human experience and it's authentic. I love that. So P, passion and purpose. When you were talking about purpose, it reminded me so much of that, of the, the Disney Pixar movie, Soul. Soul, yeah. So good. I love, like, it's one of, by far one of my favorites. So good. Movies. And um, I love the message, which is what you said, like your purpose is your being, right? You're a human being. Your purpose is to be here on planet Earth at this time and space. But then having your passion and like doing something, you know, to contribute to the healing of the world. Then L, letting go of old parts of yourself, limiting beliefs. A, alignment, which you talked a lot about. I loved it. And Y is you. Back to you. Yeah. Play. Love, it. Love yeah. that. And this is a and method that you use in your mentorship programs. Is that correct? It, yeah, it's a mentorship. In, in our mentorship, we always go through the play, uh, play methodology. And I want to mention that it's not a linear methodology because sometimes you're like working on your limiting beliefs and then you realize like, oh my gosh, my alignment to my purpose is actually completely different than I thought because now that I let go of these things, this other part of it got cleared off. Or you're when you're working on your action portion of it and your alignment portion of it, you come back to that limiting belief. So it's not like PLAY goes in, in in a linear order. It's just like what we were talking about this whole conversation that everything is malleable and things switch orders, things switch, and different things come up and things amplify at a certain time of your own healing process. And something else might be more prominent and more dominant at another time. And so it's so really beautiful because when you give yourself grace to you know to work through and to play through some of these different elements you're literally allowing your energy to be open and we don't have to be closed up that there's only one method there's only one thing one 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 we're always searching for that one answer but it's like it's all here it's all here for you and this is such a simple way to think this is such a simple way to think like all i have to do is you know amplify the things that I've already been doing and I low-key already know in my gut what I should be doing and now I just like double down on that you know yeah. it's so simple it conceptually yeah exactly just conceptually so simple and I had to let go of like my fear of being judged of stories that I hold on from childhood yeah. and I just have to not worry about like the 8,000 methods that are not meant for me and just like align with like the few that are meant for me what that's so simple you know yeah. and and then and then it's it's like oh my gosh all I have to do is listen to myself it's all about my why and and just trust myself is it that simple it's kind of unpacking this belief that we always need to add more to ourselves you know we're not enough we need more strategies we need more help we need more 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 healing more 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 and this is about like unpacking it to the level where it's like you actually need less just come back to the basics 
just come back to the things that actually already exist within you. And when we work through that, when we per parse through that, and we allow yourself to actually enjoy the process, instead of feeling like I'm broken and I'll have to go heal the stuff from my childhood or I'm broken, broken, broken. There's no broken, you mm -hmm. know? We, we just, we, who said that? You know, you don't have to be broken to, to be inquisitive about yourself. You don't have to be broken to question things. You don't, something doesn't have to be broken for you to just be curious. And that's what we come back to. Play, be curious, have fun, dismantle stuff, come up with some weird idea, try it out. Maybe that's the truth, you know? Play more. Who knows? Play. We're, we're not broken, we just forgot. Forgot just who forgot. we are. <laughs> we're just on yeah. a journey to remember. Exactly. So, um, based on your experience with your students and mentees like what are what are the most common fears and struggles that, that they hold yeah i think this comes back to what we mentioned all the way in the beginning where i was like the reason i created this you know space for healers and mentees is because i was alone you know it's because i the journey is alone and i think the co most common fear is that people won't get them. People won't see them, that they're trying to express something that is so profound for them, especially healers and coaches who, you know, have just experienced like massive amounts of growth by doing breath work or sound healing or meditation or dance or sing. They have this like beautiful practice and they're elevating in their vibration. They're changing the way that they're thinking, their attitudes and thoughts and behaviors are looking different. With that, your community starts to look different too. The people you want to hang out with start to look different. The people who you can relate to start to look different. So there's a huge, huge fear that you're going to be alone. And that's the beauty of having any kind of space like a mentorship where, you know, there's actually other people just like you who are going through this breakup process with their old self too, mm -hmm. who are, who are, you know, it's kind of like a breakup support group, you know, it's like, you got to leave the ex, you got to leave them in the past. And your, your natural instinct for not wanting to be alone is to go back to what you know. It's to go back to the old stuff, to go back to the comfort, pretty much, to go back to the ways of being. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, temporarily it feels good because it satisfied your temporary need to belong to something. And then you find yourself in the same place, like you're not living in your purpose. You aren't feeling, you know, aligned. You aren't feeling in your truth. You aren't feeling it comes back around in that loop. So I would say hands down, aside from any business struggles, any kind of, you know, strategy struggles or anything, it's this very human fear of not being seen. Not belonging. Not belonging. And what we work through by having visualizations or representation of other people who are going through, it just l reminds you that like, wait a second, you know, in the same way that me and you connected, Will, it's like, we connected and we maintained a friendship. We maintained connection. And you know how it goes in LA too. You know, you know how it goes like there's, there's belonging. You want to have a community, but it takes time to find that. And here you have a space already created in a virtual space. You already have the space where there's like-minded people already attracted to this area from all around the world who are coming here with the same goal in mind. They want to be in their fullest embodiment. They're yeah. done faking it. And I think with this new Aquarian age, this is going to happen more and more. The sense of community combined with technology, right? That didn't, we didn't have like thousands of years ago. Mm. So I love that. Would that be like one of your um, practical advice for, for anyone who wants to start to own their gifts and like, I want to be a coach. I want to be a healer. Would that be like one of your first pieces of advice to find a community? Yeah, I would say find your support system really fast. And also if you outgrow your support system because you're elevating, it's okay. It's okay to know what your specific needs are. And there's no need for you to do anything alone. 
there is beauty in healing alone and processing information. It's not to say that everything you experience, you have to go share with somebody and get other people's opinions on it and like, you know, get other ideas put into your mind. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is really beautiful to do alone when you're on that healing journey and when you're stepping up as a healer. Absolutely. That integration process, doing it by yourself is 100% really necessary and it's also important to have some form of contact with a support group that's like okay like let me talk about l let me talk about these concepts let me talk about these emotions let me talk about what i experienced in a breathwork session without it being completely brand new concepts to them mm -hmm. and so imagine talking about it to somebody you knew like 10 years ago and they're just like looking at you like you're cuckoo caca you know you don't need that energy in in your space when you are doing so much work to undo so much work right like you yeah. don't you don't you don't need to get make it harder on yourself so number one thing i would say just having a community of people whether it's something that you've invested to be in or whether it's like you know something you participate on social media or you're in a mastermind or you're in a mentorship that's where my biggest work has happened when i went into communities where I'm like, wow, there's actually other people who think the way that I think and they're not interested to be like Instagram aesthetic wellness people. They're not interested to just like talk about health and healing in this way. They're also scientists and they also like read books and they're also very articulated. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a whole group of people. I'm not the only one. And that that is something I wish I had back then. I wish that there were more people so that I could have a representation of what it feels like. I had to find that feeling on my own, which I'm grateful for, which is amazing. But if there was like one or two people, you know, like one or two people kind of helping that process, it would have changed so much too. Love that. And we're almost getting to the end. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> um, my question is, what do you hope to see in the future for the healing community? Uh, I hope to see, I hope to see embodiment, just embodied healers, just like people who actually practice what they preach, you know, and I think that it starts with us. It starts with us actually having these conversations, being our authentic selves, acknowledging that we don't know what we don't know. And we don't, we don't know what we were, we were going to find out later. We're just having human experiences right now and embody that, enjoy it. So I hope that the healing space, healing community, anybody who's in the process of healing, who's even thinking about learning about different modalities, like, you know, sound healing, breath work, meditation, and, and um, embodiment, movement, and all this stuff. I hope that you find the fullest embodiment of yourself so that you don't have to show up into the world feeling like you're not enough, feeling like you're being judged, feeling like this isn't good, that isn't good. You're good, you know, you're good as you are. You will improve as you go and maybe you won't, but that's okay. So that embodiment piece is the number one thing I hope to see. I love that. And would you like to share any projects or programs in the pipeline? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a bunch of immersions and intensives coming up. You can find them all on alwaysplay.org. And I've got a three month uh, intuitive business mentorship showing up in February 2021, which is three months of intuitive business creation for anybody who's a healer and a coach who is trained in their modalities and does not know where to start their business. So it's a three month accelerator program where we go through creating your offer, building up your business, and also learning how to attract your soulmate clients to you. And then I've also have a seventh month immersion coming up, which is for anybody who is wanting to go through a longer immersive healing journey. And you'll also train in breath work, you'll train in sound healing, you'll train in embodiment coaching, and you'll also receive mentorship from me for seven months. So if you go onto my website, you'll find all that information. You can get on the wait list and I'll email you more info. Wow, you're awesome. And on social media, how people can connect with you, like where are you most present? Yeah, if you wanna see me trolling on Instagram, you can catch me on there at shanila.sathar. I create a lot of content around breath work and sound healing and also just keeping the spiritual journey light. 
and you can also join our free community on Facebook. It's called The Playground, and it's basically uh, do a lot of uh, community building in there, business coaching. We have conversations. There's a lot of memes in there, completely free. And you can also catch uh, YouTube where I have a couple of meditations on there, sound baths and guided moon meditations. Love that. And as usual, I'll leave the links in the show's notes so people can click on. And Shanila, I want to acknowledge you for your growth and for your Thank expansion. You. We were talking about expansion. And I feel that from you, like you have been expanding so much, not just like your business, but as a human being, as you present yourself, your energy. And I remember the first time I met you and comparing that to today, I, that's what I feel. I just feel a lot of expansion. Thank you. And how you're presenting yourself out into the world. It's so authentic and inspiring. And so I thank you for shining your light, for being your most authentic self. And I think by doing so, you're helping so many people to do the same. So thank you. Thank you. I really received that compliment. Thank you so much for seeing me. From my heart. Much love. Much love. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode. Shanilla is awesome, right? If you would like to work with her or get more info about her upcoming programs, visit www.alwaysplay.org. There, you can also discover your healer archetype, which we talked about in the show. Follow her on Instagram at shanilla.sotar. As usual, you'll be able to find links on the show's notes. And once again, if this has brought you value, please subscribe to my podcast and take a screenshot of it, share it to your Instagram story, and be sure to tag me and Shanilla so we know that it's brought you value and your friends might benefit from this episode too. As always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open, and let love lead the way. I love you. See you in the next episode.